Today we're going to be going over all the main framing elements that you'll find in a typical house. There are timestamps, so if there's any part that you want to go to in particular, feel free to skip ahead. Okay, so let's start off with the foundation. Before the frame is shot, brick layers have either built up brick or block work, subfloor walls and piers. All the concreters have come and poured the foundation and footings. Either way, we've been given a level base to work off of. On top of masonry pier construction, you'll typically find bearers and joists. A bearer is a subfloor member that supports the joist. You'll typically find them on piers or posts. Joists are fixed to the bearers, sometimes on top and sometimes directly into it using hardware like these hangers. Joists create the floor structure of a house. They're long pieces of timber that span open space and act like a bridge across long distances. Joists used to be solid timber, but now it's mostly been replaced by engineered timber like these eye joists and open web floor joists. Eye joists are cheap, stable, very versatile and can have holes cut in them which utilities can be run through like ducts and wiring. Open web floor trusses offer similar advantages. The floor joists then get covered with subfloor. Subflooring is typically sheets of plywood or particle board sheet flooring with tongue and groove edges that interlock. This is built out over to the edge of the structure then everything above this point sits on top of the subflooring. This includes the walls themselves. This is known as platform construction, and it also gives a surface for framing to be assembled on. Framed walls are built with studs, but stud is just a blanket term for the upright pieces that create the vertical structure of the house. You'll typically find studs are spaced at 450 to 600 centers. Just keep in mind that studs never actually touch the subfloor. Instead, they sit on the bottom plate. The bottom plate typically runs the entire perimeter of the foundation, and they're almost always tied down with anchor bolts, which assist from the house lifting up in the case of strong winds. So we've got the bottom plate, but we've also got a top plate. Top plates are typically doubled up for strength, which are also known as double plates. Adding top and bottom plates to the stud turns all the individual pieces into a rigid unit. This allows the walls to be built laying down, then stood up and put into place. You'll find studs and plates are pretty much continuous, except for where they're interrupted by windows and doors. The openings where you've got doors and windows actually have their own subset of terminology, based on where they're positioned and what they're supporting. This bit of timber above the opening is a lintel, or a header. They're very important because when we either have a door or window opening, they create a hollow space, which means the studs aren't really there to support the weight from above. There should never be any weight on top of a door or window. They just sit in the hollow space and do their job. The ends of the lintels sit on pieces called jam studs. The jam studs support the weight of the lintel. Depending on the span of the lintel, you may need a few of these. Below your window, you'll find the sill trimmer, which supports the window sill. These empty spaces below a window or above a door are filled with short studs called jack studs. These give a surface that plasterboard and cladding can be nailed to. And these little bits are called noggins. They act as horizontal bracing between studs. In New Zealand, they're typically known as dwangs, or in America, blocking. Again, all this structure bears the weight around the opening so that the doors and windows don't have to. Joists are also supported by another horizontal member known as a beam. Beams are sometimes made of dimensional lumber that have been grouped together. Or more commonly, they're made of LVLs, laminated veneer lumber. Now, beams also need something to sit on for support. Sometimes they rest on masonry piers like in a foundation. Other times they rest on top of posts and columns. Posts and columns are pretty much a catch-all term for vertical support. Sometimes they're made of hollow steel. Other times they're made of wood like the common patio post. Columns and posts transfer the weight from a beam down to somewhere lower in the foundation or another support. Taking a bit of a sidestep, let's go over staircases. Staircases used to be built entirely from notch timber, known as stringers. In some cases, mostly outdoors now, they're still built this way, but most modern interior staircases are built in factories as a single enclosed unit and pretty much get installed just like a ramp. The vertical pieces of a staircase are known as a riser and the horizontal pieces are known as a tread. Okay, continuing on up higher, higher floors are pretty much built like the ground floor. Joists sit on the top plate of the wall below, Subfloor covers those joists, and the next wall frame sits directly on top. And now for the roof. In traditional framing, roofs are made up of rafters. Rafters are similar to floor joists, but instead of horizontal, they're set diagonally at a fixed pitch. At the bottom, the rafter sits on the top plate of the wall below. Other times it sits on top of the floor structure of, say, an attic. Rafters typically travel upward to a ridge board. The ridge board gets sandwiched between the rafter peaks. On a broader note with roof shapes, when there are two roof planes just like this, that's typically a gable roof. Whereas when roof plans meet up like this, it's a hip roof. Back to rafters, there are slight variations in the name depending on the context. This is dependent on where they're located and what they're touching. Now onto trusses. Trusses are made of much skinnier and shorter pieces of timber, which are pinned together with spiky metal plates. The web is usually engineered up so that the roof truss doesn't actually need any load bearing walls beneath. They act like a large beam, spanning from one outer wall to another. They're very strong and they speed up construction. They cut down on the amount of large dimensional timber that's needed to build a house. Now with all the framing members assembled, we're almost there. But there's one critical thing that we haven't mentioned yet. 
which is bracing. Bracing comes in various forms, but the two most common that you'll see is structural plywood and hoop line strapping, which assists the structure in resisting horizontal forces like strong winds pushing and pulling the building. And that's pretty much it. But if you have some alternative names that you'd like to share, or you're an experienced builder with something to add, or even correct, let me hear about it in the comments below, and thanks for watching.